In a world of differentiated learning outcomes, this film has just five. You will be able to build and launch a water rocket, design a diagram to explain all the forces acting on a rocket, explain Newton's three laws of motion and apply to two different scenarios. Explain terminal velocity. And analyze and evaluate velocity time graphs. a rocket. You will need fizzy drinks bottle, one. Uh, no. Empty fizzy drinks bottle, uh. one. Payload to shift center of mass forward, tennis ball, one. Fins to send center of drag backward, three. To hold it all together, tape, assemble. This is how you make a water rocket. What are the forces acting on this rocket? No force acting on rocket. Oh, rocket not moving. Oops. Oops. There are forces acting on this rocket, even though it isn't moving. They are gravity and the reaction force. The forces are balanced, so no changes in motion. What's an unbalanced force then? Ah, these four guys look pretty balanced. Let's send another force. Look, here he comes. Oh my goodness, he completely falls over. <gasps> this resultant force is the unbalanced force. Ah, oh, I get it now. Can anyone tell me the unit of force? Oops. That's right. The Newton is named after none other than Sir Isaac Newton, <gasps> 17th century physicist and astronomer. A dead clever man who described the three laws of motion. He used to be on the one pound note. By the way, hot exam tip. When working out a sum, you usually get one mark for including the unit. In this example, just a capital N, the Newton. Enough talk. Let's get this rocket moving. To add extra momentum to the rocket, we add water. You place the rocket on the launcher and energy is provided by you pushing air in. The air pushes the water back out of the rocket and as a reaction force the rocket goes in the opposite direction forward for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction this is Newton's third law of motion third law? you haven't even told us the first one yet oh the first law is really easy too law one states that things remain the same unless you apply an unbalanced force it's the same whether something is stationary or moving. Balance forces here, so no change. 
Once I've placed this chimp here, he's at rest and he'll remain here forever until another additional force is applied. And once launched, this rocket would carry on at constant velocity forever if no other forces then acted on it. So, the acceleration of an object depends on two variables. One is the resultant force. What's the other? Is it A, weight, B, mass, or C, height? Hmm, not really. The answer is actually B, mass. Let's fire some rockets to explain. Nice! Now let's use the same force on a heavier rocket. Ah, oh, not so good. The heavy rocket again, this time twice the force? Yeah! The equation describing this situation is very simple. Force equals mass times acceleration. So the second law states that if there is an unbalanced force, then the object will accelerate in that direction. We can apply the laws of forces even to everyday things like heading a ball and jumping. <laughs> there are forces acting now, even though nothing is moving. Now the rocket is released. As water is ejected downwards, there's a recoil force pushing the rocket upwards. As the water leaves, the rocket becomes lighter, so the gravitational force gets smaller. Air resistance increases with speed. As the water runs out, thrust force has gone. Gravity and air resistance are the only forces now in action, and they slow the rocket down until it stops. The gravitational pull on the rocket is greater than the air resistance, so the rocket accelerates downwards. At some point, these two forces will balance, and the rocket stops accelerating, reaching terminal velocity. Whoops. Let's try to stop smashing up sheds by adding a big force opposing gravity to make terminal velocity a lot slower. The new force is provided by air resistance from parachute. Wow! To start with, there's an enormous force that jolts the rocket to a much slower speed. We've got so much air resistance now, it almost balances the gravity force so the rocket descends extremely slowly. Oh, very slowly. Oh, while we're waiting for the rocket to land, here's the A-star bit. Watch the graph to see how the unbalanced thrust force speeds the rocket upwards. Then air resistance and gravity slow it down until it's reached its highest point. Now it drops, accelerated by gravity, until the increasing air resistance balances gravity. With a parachute, the forces balance at a lower descent speed. I can't be bothered to wait any longer for this rocket to land. Come on, let's summarise what we learnt on our way back to class. Well, that was a good lesson. And now you know everything about forces. <laughs>